والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين حبيبنا ونبينا سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين ومن تبعهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين آمين ما بعد حياكم الله so today um, at the request of some brothers uh, we're going to continue talking about what, what we were what we were, what was discussed in the khutbah so the khutbah today was about um, a nasiha of a man A nasiha of a man named uh, Ibrahim ibn Adham Abu Ishaq He was from Basra He was originally from a place called Balkh okay, That's the name of the place It's called Balkh It's, it's, it's in Khorasan And um, Khorasan In the language of The people of Khorasan Khorasan means the place where the sun rises Khora means like the Rising sun is sun Khorasan, uh, the Central Asia today, what we call Central Asia. So uh, he was Nazar uh, al Basra. He he uh, he moved to Basra, being a center of knowledge at the time. He he uh, studied with or he accompanied some of the Tabi'in, notably some of the one of the more notable ones maybe Sufyan Thawri. Uh, he was known for his wara, he was known for his taqwa, he was known for his piety, his zuhd as well. Uh, they say he, um, he was uh, pretty well off, came from a good family, but uh, he saw a dream, and you know, Allah Mustafa, yeah, he saw some dream, and he, you know, he realized from this dream that he was wasting his life, and basically he left, he left, um, his, I guess today would be Mercedes in his nice big house, and he, you know, went into a state of zuhud and uh, seclusion from the world. Uh, some some of the Salaf had some things to say about him, but generally he's he's accepted. That's Ibrahim ibn Adham. So he mentioned ten things. We only got through about four during the khutbah. So we're going to just quickly review what we went through. So he said, so the people of Basra, as for the people who don't know the story, uh, the people of Basra, there's a big group of people, they gathered around Ibrahim ibn Adham, rahimahullah, and they said, and there's different narrations of what he, they said, but basically what they said was, ما بالنا ندعو الله ولم يستجب لنا. Right? And he, they said like, What's the what's the deal with us that we 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 we're calling upon Allah, we're making du'a to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, but He's not responding to our call. And didn't and then he said, didn't Allah say, "Ud'uni astajib lakum," like call on me and I will answer your call. So then Ibrahim ibn Adham turned to them. He said, "Dari kali anna kuluba kum qad matat li ashrati li bi ashrati ashya or li ashrati ashya." He said that is because your 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 hearts have been Hearts have turned, you know, lifeless. Your hearts have died because of ten things. And then he went on to mention uh, ten things. He doesn't explain to them. Some of the ulama they give an explanation. So the first he thing he said, he said, "Araftum Allaha wa lam tu adu haqqahu." Right? He said that you you known Allah, you have knowledge of Allah who He is, and you don't give Him His right. You don't fulfill His right. And as we know, as Muslims, as, as people of Tawheed, we know that the right of Allah SWT upon His creation is that we make Tawheed of Allah. وَحَدَ يُوَحِدُ تَوْحِيدًا right? that, we make, that we single Allah out in everything we do in terms of our worship. That we, that we don't do anything except for Allah's sake. That we don't pray. What is it? in the wa mamati. Right? So uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He's telling you that you know your life and your death. He doesn't he can't name everything right to do with life. But the most important things, you know, he talks about salah and nusuk, which is right, um, sacrificing and, uh, some ulama have mentioned to do with the fasting, some of the the hajj. All of it. Nusuk is a comprehensive word. Ibadah, generally. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. 
Byly mi entrance. <laughs> and then mahya wa mamat. I mean, that's pretty comprehensive. Right? That my living and my dying is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we single out Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in everything we do. That's, our, that's, the, that's the purpose of life. It's not some, you know, people have written books, making documentaries. I mean, so much juhud into something that we really know. The answer is inside every human being. The fitrah of every human being knows why we were created. You don't need to write a book. You don't need to do all these things. I was just the other day I watched a documentary by a guy, I don't know if you know him, his name is Ben Stein. Uh, smart guy, funny guy, but he's a very intelligent person. He wrote, made a he made a documentary called um, "Expelled uh, uh, Knowledge Is Not Allowed" or something like this. It's about creationism and Darwinistic evolution and all this kind of stuff. And it's uh, almost two hours long. He goes from he travels all over the place. He meets all these different uh, professors, and he's like, you know. وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ خَلَاصَ انتهى الكلام We have the answer, you know the answer, but you, the, the people do is that they run around in a circle, you done dino, you know? They run around in a circle because the actual realization of that truth, it necessitates action. Once you really realize that, you know, there is only one God, there is an Allah SWT, He is uh, watching over us, He did send messengers, and all this, all this knowledge necessitates what change in somebody's life it necessitates action you're compelled you feel a compulsion inside yourself i have to worship him then you then people they go looking for what's the sharia that i'm supposed to follow and the, sh the sharia for us is islam right so the right of allah is the tawheed so we knew allah you know allah but we don't give him his right right we do everything except that right and then he said, Right? That you you've read the Quran, you read the Quran, and you've read the Quran, but you don't act according to it. You don't act in accordance to the Quran. You read the Quran like I I believe uh, you know sometimes Muslims they have a romantic uh, relationship with the Quran. It's, it's just a romantic relationship. There's no real meat behind it. If, if, a, if a non Muslim came in and asked so any one of us, especially the younger brothers, and, so, and he said, What's the Quran? and he started attacking the Quran, what's our natural uh, reaction? We'll defend it. We'll get angry. We'll be like, Oh, how can you say this? The Quran is the most amazing book in the world. It's like this, it's like that. Do you know that the Quran is it's like this and like that? I said, you know, when's the last time you read the Quran? When's the last time you actually, you know, set out to understand the Quran? What's the Quran? What does Quran mean? What, is, what does Quran mean? Right? I don't know. Can you tell me some things about Quran? Tell me, you know, what are the do's and the don'ts? What are the injunctions in the Quran? What are the teachings of the Quran? He'll tell you something like, you know, like uh, regurgitated. Oh, it means you should be a good person. I'm like, so does the Bible. Right? Oh, you should, be, you should be kind to your neighbors. So does the Torah. Right? What is the Quran? This book that you defend so much that you're ready to, you're burning buildings, you, you know, uh, rioting and stuff like that. For what? How have you applied it? Let me, where is the practical aspect of this Quran in your life? You, you're reading the Qur'an, but you're not doing anything with it. You have the knowledge of the Qur'an, but you're not acting according, in accordance with it, in accordance to it. And these two things I mentioned earlier in the khutbah, uh, that when you have knowledge of, the, uh, knowledge of Allah and His Messenger, through the Qur'an and through the Sunnah, when you know Allah, right? when you know Allah, you know the Qur'an, you know the message of Allah. This necessity, it, it makes you love Allah, it makes you love the message of Allah, it makes you love the Qur'an. Right? If you don't know the Qur'an, you don't know what the Qur'an is, you don't know who Allah is, you don't know who the message of Allah is. Allah, who's Allah? He's God. Okay. Who's God? He's the, the guy who did everything, right? He's like, okay, yeah, well, who, tell me who Allah is. 
Oh, he's the Khaliq, he's the... Okay, but you're telling me his names, you're telling me what he did. Who is Allah? Who is he? Tayyip, tell me something about him. Tell me something about your ilah, about your God, about your deity that you worship. No, tell me his names, tell me what those mean. So what Khaliq, so what Bari, so what Musawwir. Right? So, Ar-Rahman, so what? Ar-Rahim, so what? Tell me about this guy that you guys claim to be as a prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What's his father's name? What's his kunya? Who are his, who are his family members? Where was he from? What did he look like? What were his mannerisms? I mean, I, I remember I tell, told, to tell some, told someone who's Muslim in a Muslim country. Uh, I said some, I said something, and he said, "Who said that?" I said, "Muhammad Abu Abdullah." So I said, "Them." No. He's like, "Who's that?" And I was like, "Allah Astar." Muhammad ibn Abdullah, I mean the Prophet. Oh, he said, oh, say, 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 Nabi. I'm like, well, you don't know his name? Muhammad ibn Abdullah, if I say that, this, it's going it's to confuse you. Which Muhammad ibn Abdullah said that? Who am I talking about? Who am I talking about? This is not a khutbah, you guys can talk. Who am I talking about? When I say Muhammad ibn Abdullah, ibn Abdul Muttalib, Abu al Qasim, alayhi salatu was salam, talking about the Prophet, right? I mean, I said to someone else the other day, وقال الأب القاسم مثل ما لنا يا أبو القاسم don't care what he said I said عجيب I said you see you don't care what Abu القاسم said he said من هذا أبو القاسم I said who can you say to something like that right? and then Muslims they wonder why we're in such a state you know they they they, they, they they you know a few years back when the Pope made those remarks about the Prophet cars were burned people were killed is that what the Messenger of Allah taught us to do to kill in his name when did he say Worst things were said about him when he was alive. Right? Not only that, not only that, who's greater, Allah or his messenger? These people, the, 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 the Pope, for, all, for, <laughs> for every, you know, and he's like the head, he's the, he's the heavenly father on earth for the Catholics. Every, every single day when they wake up, they make shirk with Allah. They, they, they lie against the Lord of the entire world when they say he has a son. They say he has a mother. They say he, they died for three days. All these kind of things. This is a greater atrocity. Right? All of this means what? Means that the Muslims, we have a lot of emotions. You know, we have all this, oh, please, we have got to defend this person, that person. Yeah, well, you know how you defend them? By preserving their teachings. That's how you defend them. By living the way that they taught you to live. That's how you defend the Messenger of Allah. That's how you defend Allah. That's how you defend Islam. By adorning yourselves with those qualities that Islam, and those morals that Islam teaches you. Right? Right? Upon you is to take care of your own soul and to adorn it with the virtues that you know are known. Patience, mercy, love. These were the things, I mean, yeah, there's a time to be harsh, there's a time not to be. But these are the things the Messenger of Allah came, came with. Was the Messenger of Allah sent rahmatan lil alameen or adab? Rahmah. Was he sent nadheeran wa bushra? Bashiran? Or was he, was he sent bashiran wa nadheera? Inna arsalnaka bil haqqi bashiran wa nadheera. Indeed, we have sent you with the truth as a person giving glad tidings and a warner. Not the other way around. He didn't come like, he didn't stand in front of Quraysh and say, oh boy, you guys are in trouble. You guys are screwed if you don't do what I tell you. No. He told them, he's like, what do you think of me? They said, you're like this, you're like that, you're great, you know. He said, قولوا لا إله إلا الله تفلحوا وتملكوا العرب والأجم He didn't say, قولوا لا إله إلا الله He said, قولوا لا إله إلا الله Say, لا إله إلا الله And you will gain success and you become the leaders of the Arabs and the non-Arabs he didn't say and then you know the hellfire won't touch you he didn't mention that yet he's giving, he's giving Bushra first he's giving them glad tidings first 
And then you know what happened. Everybody knows what happened after that. The, the, the attacks and the you know, persecution of the Messenger of Allah. But we need to be Muslims, not just by just you know, the word Muslim. It's very easy to say I'm a Muslim. I'm, you know, I, oh, I'm, 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 I'm a Muslim. Or you, the same thing we're saying, oh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a good kid. Right? Or if your mom says okay, to a child, I say to my son, he's three and a half years old, you're a good boy, Laith? He says, yeah. And then he goes and you break stuff. No, but he's a kid. Though. It's, for us, it's different. We say we're a Muslim, then we don't act like the person who's made istislam of his soul. A Muslim is the one who's in a state of submission to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in a state of, you're not fighting Allah. Which brings us what I said, I mentioned the lines of poetry during the khutbah, where uh, I'm not sure who said it, but it's a very beautiful line of poetry. It says, تدعي حب الإله ثم تعصيه إن هذا إن هذا لعمري إن هذا لعمري في القياس بعيد So that you claim that you love Allah and then you disobey Him. This is something, this is a weird kind of way you think. Right? وَلَوْ كُنْتَ صَادِقًا فِي حُبِّكَ لَا طَعْتُهُ إِنَّ الْمُحِبَّ لِمَنْ يُحِبُّ مُطِيعُ That if you were truthful in their claim of love, you would have obeyed him. Indeed, the one who loves for his beloved is obedient. Right? We claim to love Allah. We claim to love the Messenger of Allah, but where is the ta'a? Where is the obedience? I gave the uh, example of my wife when she was pregnant. Negative, four, negative 40 degrees outside, 10 o'clock at night. Low visibility, winds, high winds. She comes to me and tells me she wants cheesecake. You know? I said, no, it's not going to happen. Right? And 10 minutes later, I was putting on my coat to go outside. Right? Why? Bec not because she was nagging me, it's because... It, the one, the one you love, you, the person who loves that, claims to love somebody else, he's obedient to that person. If they need something, if they want something, you do it. For the brothers that aren't married, or for the brother, if, if, or somebody who wants a better example, maybe for your mom. If your mother is sick, and there's nobody else to take care of her but you, what are you going to do? You're going to leave her? Come to the masjid? No. You're going to make sure she's okay. You're going to, son, I need some soup. Son, I need some water. Son, I need my medicine. You're there doing everything, sitting and sta doing everything she tells you to do. And what about the one who gave life to your mother, gave life to your wife, gave life to your children, gave life to you? Every breath is a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right? So, you claim that you love Allah, but you don't act according to, but you don't, you know, you don't obey Him, right? You don't give Him His right. You know Allah and you don't give Him His right. You claim that you love the Prophet and you go, go against His Sunnah, right? But da'aytu muhabbar rasul, falam ta'malu bi sunnatihi. Right? So the Qur'an you don't, and you read the Qur'an and you don't act according to it. And then the fourth thing I mentioned was, عَلَمْتُمْ أَنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ عَدُوُّكُمْ وَوَيْلَيْتُمُوهُ This is something weird. That you know that the shaitan is your enemy, but you made him your friend anyways. You know, you're, you're, he's, your, he's your open enemy. Like Allah SWT mentions the Qur'an, أَلَمْ أَحَدَ إِلَيْكَ يَا بَنِي آدَمْ it's like, did I not take an ahad? Did I not take a, 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 a promise with you? Right? A contract with you? O oh, children of Adam, that you wouldn't obey, you wouldn't worship and obey the shaitan. He's a, he's a clear, clear enemy towards you. Right? But what do we do? This is the nature of human beings. It's very, it's very ajeeb. 
that we know something's bad for us, but we do it anyways. It's, a, it's something, it's like a human, it's a human uh, uh, enigma. Something that is just not understood. And people who even understand it fall into it. Right? You know that something, this thing is bad for you. Like people who drink alcohol, they know it's bad for them, but they do it anyways. Right? I know many kufar, they say, well, we hate, who likes the taste of alcohol? They say, nobody likes the taste of alcohol. They like what alcohol, they, they say, we like what alcohol does to, to, uh, to us. That's what they say. I know it, ca- it causes liver failure. What? Liver, fine, fa- it fails. Right? I drink it anyways. Right? I know that it causes, you know, more accidents on the street than, you know, anything else. I'll do it anyways. I know that incest, rape, all of these things, 80% of the cases they find that one or the, one of the two people involved in that act were drunk. Do it anyways. Right? This is the condition of a human being. But since we're sitting in a masjid, I, I, I mean, I used a different example. I said, you know, as young people, we might go, we go through a lot of things, especially the youth, and especially in the West. We go, through a lot of, we go through a lot of stuff. You know, instead of turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we turn on the television. Instead of turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we you know, turn on the music. Instead of turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we play video games. Instead of turning, on, turning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we might even go play basketball. Right? The shaitan is very, he's, he's very evil. He's, he's very, very uh, jealous. If he can't make you sin, he'll make you do something else. But he's going to make you turn away from Allah. Playing basketball is not haram. But he'll make you, if he can't make you drink, if he can't make you listen to music, if he can't make you do anything haram, he's going to tell you, okay, go play basketball, halal, right? Go shoot a few hoops. Get your mind clear. Go shoot. No, why not make wudu and make raka'atain? No. Go play basketball. Right? Anything to make you turn away from Allah, to make you miss an opportunity to, go, to gain nearness to Allah SWT. That's how the shaitan is. Right? He's like he like uh, he he swore he swore an oath by Allah in front of uh, in front of uh, uh, Adam alayhi salam and Hawa alayhi salam. وقاسم وقاسم right? Inni lakum lamin al nasihin. Right? It's like I he swore by Allah. He's like I'm I'm a, I'm just I'm a sincere advisor to you too. I mean, I, see, we need to stop reading the Quran like, oh, no, I mean, like, we need to make, do they not ponder over the Quran? Really, like, seriously, be, become Muslims who actually make, because all of this is there, right? All this kitab, oh, you know, the, all these, but where do you think these people are getting this stuff from? From the air? Or is this material, all this stuff, is from where? Oh, it's in the Quran. But we've got to stop and look in it, open the thing. Open the kitab, open the book and read it with reflection. Right? The Quran is not meant to be just like this thing that's recited and then put away. The word Quran doesn't mean that. Even that, the word Qur'an, it means something that's continuously recited. Continuously recited. Qur'an. It's on that wazin, it's on that scale. It's something that's continuously and recited much, recited a lot. Right? Not just during Ramadan. No. And in the Indian Pakistani culture, we have like, you know, khatam Qur'an. So, so you finish the Quran once, then you have a party, right? Just whatever, fine. But I mean, like, uh, just once, really? It's a big deal to make the khatam of the Quran. But what's the point? There's absolutely no benefit if you're not if your your whole life. It takes you twenty years to finish reading the Quran. In those twenty years, you've done everything that the Quran told you not to do. 
at the end of those 20 years, you're not a better person after reading the Quran, maybe even a worse person. It's had no effect on you. Right? He goes on to say, Shaitan said to, the, uh, to Adam alayhi salam and to Hawa alayhi salam, Ala adullukum ala shajarat al khuld. It's like, should I not guide you? Should I not show you a tree that will give you everlasting life? He's pitching to them, lying, he's swearing by Allah. Like when he said to Allah, he said, Wa bi by, He swore by the honor of Allah. Ajma'een. That I will misguide all of them. Except ibadikat al mukhlasin. Except your sincere slaves. I have no power over them. He swore an oath by the izzah of Allah. This is the shaitan. You know? So this is, this is, we have to know who he is. All of it is there. It's all there. We, we read the Qur'an, we have the, the ahkam of the Qur'an. The do's, the don'ts, the regulations, how to do hajj, so on and so forth. But the Qur'an is not a book of rules only. There are some rules in it. But they're com in comparison to qisas and ibarat, the, there's, there's, the, the verse in the Qur'an, there's maybe about four or five hundred that are, you know, ayat that are ahkam, about, that have to do with the ahkam, that have to do with the regulations in the, in the sharia. And there's about 6,620 something, like, you know, there's a difference in the different riwayat of the Qur'an. 6236. Right? Depending on, like, there's different, there's, uh, yeah, there's warsh that has a few more. But I mean, like, basically, over 6,200 verses. And from those, about 500 to do with ahkam. What's the rest to do with? Nothing? Is it just meeting up the book? Did Allah just meet up the book just so it can make it nice and thick? No. The Quran has many injunctions on how to live a moral life. And it has instruction for people like in any time. Like I mentioned a few examples in the khutbah, but there's so many I can mention. There's so much. Like Aisha anha, when she was asked what the khulaq of the Prophet were, what were the mannerisms of the Prophet, what did she say? Very simple and very beautiful. She said, Kana al Quran. That his mannerisms was the Quran. There is a walking, talking, breathing Qur'an. That's how he lived his life. We're faced today with so much animosity, with so much, uh, so much uh, aggression by the world. They don't understand. They don't understand. Most of this aggression is uh, not based on any knowledge. They don't know what Islam is. But what have we done to help them understand? Just yesterday, or Naam, yesterday, I was listening to an interview of some guy in the, in the, in the UK. And I, it, was, it was horrible. Horrible. He's like, oh, you know, only, only innocent people, only, only Muslims are innocent people. Everybody else is guilty. That means it's okay to kill all of, any, any kafir at any given time is a liable target for killing. And he was talking about wala and bara and using nice big Arabic words. I'm sitting there like, oh man. Like I've never wanted to, to, to strike a Muslim more in my life. He's a Muslim, he's ignorant. And he's he was completely, completely misrepresenting the, the deen. Right? And all these hate comments were attached to this file. Oh, burn, burn them all, kill them all, we need to save the world from Islam. And I was thinking to myself, you know, I can't really blame these people if that's what they think Islam is, and I hate that too. Killing, murdering, looting, this is what they think Islam is. They don't read, they don't, and some are Muslims, this is what they think Islam is. One verse. I, I, I mentioned in the khutbah today, one verse. 
Allah SWT says, Surah Nisa, if I believe. Surah Nisa. Allah SWT says, La yajrimannakum ah, la yajrimanna ahadukum. La, yaj, la yajrimannakum shana'ana qawmin ala ala uh, ta'adilu i'adilu. Huwa aqrabu la taqwa. Right? He said, don't let a blind hatred of a people stop you or deter you from being just. Be just. There is a, there it is. It's a fi'l amr. It's, it's, an, it's an order from Allah. This is an injunction in the Quran. Has nothing to do with salah. Has nothing to do with siyam. Has nothing to do with hajj. Has the way, way you live your life. I'dilu. Be just human beings. Be upright human beings. Be fair human beings. This is closer to piety. And I mentioned that shana'an. Shana'an ibn Asakir rahimahullah. He mentions that shana'an is a blind. It's a type of hatred that is blind and it's so shadid, it's such a severe hatred that you have that it blinds you from seeing any good in the person that you hate. That's what shana'an is. Like the people who used to attack the Prophet, they used to call, they used to call him abtar. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, wa in the Quran, inna shani'aka huwa al-abtar. Right? They used to make fun of the Prophet, call him abtar, which means like he has no male children, he has no lineage, his lineage is cut off. Because the Prophet had male, two sons that died, he had no male children. All his children that lived were women, were sisters, were daughters. So these are called Aha, Abtar, Abtar, Abtar. So Allah said, No. Inna shani aka huwa abtar. These people who hate you with this blind hatred, they can't see any good in you. Because there were Muslims, even there were people at the time, even in, even, even in the time of the Prophet, who weren't Muslims, but didn't hate the Messenger of Allah. Abu Talib is one good example, right? They didn't become Muslims, but they didn't see, they didn't think the Messenger was an evil human being. So they helped him. They saw that he was being killed, or his followers were being killed, that he was being pelted with stones. So they helped him. They didn't enter into Islam. So the verse, لَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَعَانَ قَوْمٍ has two meanings. Don't let the blind hatred of a people for you stop you from being just. They hate you as much as they hate you right now. It doesn't give you the right to be unjust. Like Shuraih al Qadi, Rahimallah Ta'ala, who sided with the Jew against Ali radiallahu anhu, and Ali was Amir al Mu'mineen. <laughs> and the Jew, the story goes that the, the, he had some property. It was I think it was uh, armor. It was a shield. And he went and you know the Ali claimed it was his. The Jews like it's mine. So they went to Ali, and they went to uh, Shuraih al Qadi, rahimullah. And they both pleaded their case. And Shuraih al Qadi is like Ali, do you, ya Amir Mumin, do you have any delil? Do you have anything? Because this was found in his property. It was found with him. Do you have anything to prove that it's yours? And he's like, oh, no. I said, Khas. Then it's the Jews. And the Jews like flabbergasted, right? He's like, Wait. he's your leader. This is not me and you going somewhere or some alim, some scholar. He's um, it's Ali radiallahu anhu, the, 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 the son-in-law of the Messenger of Allah, the cousin of the Messenger of Allah, the father of Hassan and Hussein. The Amir of Mu'min, the Amir al Mu'minin, Khairul Khalq fi Samanihi. He's the best of creation when he was alive. After ba Abu Bakr, Umar, Uthman, it was him. He is the most best human being alive at breathing at that time. There's nobody better than him. Don't let that, e there's no doubt about that. From the Shahada of the Messenger of Allah, the, the Messenger of Allah bore witness to this. He's from the Khulafa al Rashidin. It's Ali radiallahu anhu. So the, 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 Yehud, the Yehudi was like, what is this? And he said, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. He said, he bore witness to, the, to, to Islam, he became a Muslim and he said, I, this is something that I don't, this is, I don't understand. You made a ruling against, is this what Islam teaches you? Then I'm a Muslim. Shariah al-Qadi was being adil, he was being just. 
even if these people were killing them, even if the Yahudiyah, they, they say that she was the one who poisoned the Messenger of Allah, was a Jewish woman. Even if they were the people who, who, who plotted and who, 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 you know, backstabbed the Muslims constantly during the day, all of these things, they know. But that's not, that's, that has nothing to do with you. The Quran teaches you to be just human beings. That's what he did. That's who he was. He was just. Right? This is the teachings of the Quran. And then, so we stopped there during the khutbah. There's five more, th that's the fourth thing we stopped at. So the first one is that you knew Allah and you didn't give Him His right. The second thing was that you read the Quran and you didn't act upon it. The third thing was you, that you knew who Muhammad was, that you said that you loved Him, you claimed that you love Him, but you don't, you did not, you don't act according to His sunnah. The fourth one was this, that you knew is the, that the shaitan is your enemy. But, you made him your friend anyways. Right? The fifth thing he says was, عَلِمْتُ أَنَّ الْجَنَّةَ حَقٌ وَلَمْ تَعْمَلُوا لَهَا وَلَمْ تَعْمَلُوا لَهَا Do you know Jannah is real? You know Jannah is real. But you're doing nothing to attain it. What have you done to attain Jannah? You know, who has doubt that Jannah is real? I don't think anybody has any doubt that Jannah is real. But what have we done to attain this Jannah? The Messenger of Allah وسلم, he said, Ala inna sal sal Allahi ghaliya. Ala inna sal sal Allahi ghaliya. Ala sal Allahi ghaliya. Ala hiya al Jannah. Three times. He said, indeed, the, 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 the promise of Allah is precious. Indeed, the promise of Allah is precious. Indeed, the promise of Allah is precious. Indeed, that is Jannah. It's not something small. It's not like you see in the movies. It's not like you read in the books. It's not like you, it's Jannah. It's not like you see in the paintings. La ra. There's not a single, not an eye has seen it. No sight has seen it. No thought has thought of what's in there. Nothing. Wala udrun sami. Nothing. And now ear has heard. It's the the the, the, the what can be heard from Jannah. No ear has ever heard it. No eye has ever seen what can be seen in Jannah. And no mind, no no aql, no brain has ever. Pictured or, 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 or put together what Jannah really is. You can't. And it's everlasting. Right? Everlasting. As finite creatures, as human beings, do you even know what forever means? No. You can't, con you can't comprehend that because we're finite creatures. Infinite without finite, right? without hudu, uh, without. Uh, you know, had limits, borders, right? It's, it's something that is, goes on forever. What have we done? That, Ala inna Allahi ghaliya, ghaliyatun. It's precious, it's, it's expensive. The promise of Allah. And what's, what's the thaman? What's the, what, 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 what's the cost that you buy it at? Yourself. The price is what? Your own soul. Inna Allah ashtara min al-mu'minina anfusahum anfusahum wa amwalahum bi anna lahum al-jannah like Allah says in the Quran. That indeed Allah has bought has bought from the believers their souls and their wealth. Your soul and your, and your wealth. Allah has bought it. Exchange of what? Bi anna lahum al jannah. Jannah. Jannah for the cost of what? The soul that Allah gave you. And the Mufassirin they say, Rahimahumullah, 
That subhanallah, look at the izza, look at the, 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 Allah is honoring the human being by making himself the buyer and you the seller. That you have something, because the buyer is always in this, in, 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 he has advantage, right? The, uh, the seller, sorry. Like I have this thing. And somebody wants to buy it, I'm in advantage. Now I could be like, hmm, okay, well, this is worth 20 bucks. I want 25 or 30, whatever. You're, the seller is always in the advantage. And this is such an amazing thing that Allah SWT is saying about Himself. That, أَنَّ اللَّهَ اشْتَرَى مِنَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَنفُسَهُ وَمْوَالَهُمْ That He's the one buying. He's bought. Not the other way around. We should be trying to buy Jannah. Selling our soul, sell, everything we have. But Allah didn't say it like that. Because of the love of Allah SWT He has for His creation. Because of the Rahmah of Allah. No, no, it's okay. I am, buy, I'm, I am selling the Jannah. I, sorry, I am buying your soul. I'm not selling you Jannah. You're selling me your, 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 your soul and your, and your, and your, and your, and your wealth. Right? This is the this is the this is the rahma of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. I mean, what is the dunya really? That we leave this world, that we leave the acting and striving for jannah. Silat Allahi ghali. It's a, a precious promise of Allah for what the dunya? A dunya maluna tun maluna wa ma fiha. Like this Messenger said in the hadith. The dunya is cursed, everything's cursed, and everything in it is cursed. Illa dhikrullah. Except the remembrance of Allah. Wa ma wala. And what helps you make dhikr of Allah? Wa alimun wa muta'allim. That's it, brothers and sisters. That's it. We need to wake up. Seriously wake up as an ummah. That's it. Everything in this world is cursed except those things. Not Ziyad saying that. It's the Messenger of Allah so I said him saying that. It's Muhammad ibn Abdullah saying that. It's Abu Qasim saying that. It's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa saying that. It's Rahmatan lil alameen saying that. Not me. That everything in this dunya is cursed. Everything. Wa ma fiha. Everything in it. Illa dhikrullah. Except the remembrance of Allah. Wa ma wala. And what helps you make dhikr of Allah. Wa alimun wa muta'allim. And the person who is an alim, person who is upon knowledge, and the muta'allim, and the one who's seeking that knowledge. That's it. If you don't fit into these, into these categories, then you're in trouble. You're in trouble. Are we running, panting behind the dunya? That's mal'oon? That's cursed? The word itself, dunya, I, remember I mentioned it here once. Comes from the word daniya. It means many things, but you know, dana it means to come close. You know, the also the Ar old Arabs, if you look at old uh, dictionaries like Lisan al Arab and stuff like this, they use it to mean something that you can that you reach out to but can never touch. That's what daniya means, to reach for something and come so close to it but never be able to touch it. That's dunya. Right? You you will never. It's like the, the poet said, it's like salt water. It's like the water of the ocean, right? The more you drink from it, the more you drink from it, it increases you in thirst until it, it ends up killing you. It's not, it doesn't have any quenching qualities to it. The, the nature of dunya itself is that it makes you thirstier and thirstier and thirstier until it consumes your life and kills you. And you've sold You've sold your soul, not to Allah anymore. In Allah Shtaram al Mu'mineen, no, you say, I don't want that transaction anymore. You leave off that transaction of Allah and you sell your soul to what? To the dunya, to the shaitan. Right? For something that's blown, haba' manthura, it's something that's going to be blown away, it has no, no value, real value in the sight of Allah, and real value after you're dead, it won't come and help you. 
but we kill ourselves. We sell, we sell our souls and our deen and everything we can find. So we can make a quick buck. So that we could, our friends can say, yo, look how cool that guy is. Yo, he's cool. Look at those jeans he's wearing. Yo, he's cool. Look at that car he's driving. He's on point. He's got, oh man, subhanAllah, not subhanAllah. If they, if they were saying subhanAllah more, maybe they wouldn't be in that state. Right? There's a, there's a funny hadith, a, it's a hadith, I laughed when I heard it in, this, in the Mustad of Imam Ahmad that uh, the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said لِمَا يَخْرُجُ لِمَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْ إِبْنِ آدَمْ مَثَلًا لِلدُّنْيَا Mustad Imam Ahmad, the, the hadith is there that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala made an, a, a metaphor, a simile a similitude, a, an example or a parable for what comes out, for what the, for, for Ibn Adam, he defecates, he made that as a parable for the dunya. That no matter how beautiful, the message of Allah is another hadith. He said, is the ajib is the dunya. It's like, it's like, the, it doesn't matter how pizza, oh, it's my favorite food. Allah <laughs> It's my favorite food, pizza. It doesn't matter what you put on it. It's nice, it's got the French, Oh, sorry, the Italian bread, and you get the nice cheese, and it doesn't matter how many people died so you can get this cheese, and how many died so you can get this nice beef, and uh, uh, yeah, you're making them hungry? Yeah, it's not done, akhi. Then you get a nice Coke, right? C cool with ice, you know? Right? Or whatever else you like. It doesn't matter how beautiful the food is, it, when it goes into your mouth, and you eat it, and it goes into your stomach, it gets... The stomach, it does what it does to it. It takes out what it needs from it. And then what comes out in the other end? Does it smell as good? Does it look as good? I'm not going to ask you if it tastes as good. There's no haya in, in, in Islam, right? Akramakum Allah. May Allah honor you. But I'm using this as an example. I really want to drive that home. That no matter how beautiful that food is that you put in, the calamari and the muscles and the this and the that and that. I mean now the three hundred dollars you get like a nice small little thing for these restaurants right you go to a nice restaurant it's like what would you like sir and you're like oh this long title for this food and it comes and it's like a pea right doesn't matter how much you pay four hundred dollars a plate at some of these events and most of these people the wait food goes out to waste anyways well in the law just to mention that on the side in Allah la you al muslifin that's israf, waste, don't be people, I know uh, somebody was arguing with me during Ramadan. They had a few pieces of uh, grains of rice on their plate. I said, Akhi, finish your food. He said, ah, this is, you know. I said, Akhi, this, every single grain there is rizq for you. That Allah wrote for you to have and you're going to throw it away. You don't know where the barakah in your food is. Israf. Wasting, even if it's a single grain of food for no reason, that's israf. Moving along. So the dunya has no, it's like what you excrete from yourself. Right? It doesn't matter how beautiful it seems to you at the end, what's the result? It comes out the other end and it's, it's nothing. It has no worth. After you've gobbled up all this dunya. So you, عَرَفْتُمْ أَنَّ الْجَنَّةَ حَقٌ وَلَمْ تَعْمَلُوا لَهَا Okay? I could, we can go on, but let's not overkill it. Right? <laughs> then he said, And this is something that, uh, yeah, it's something that it's something that's really weird, because if anybody has ever seen like a forest fire, what do animals do? They run away. I mean, like. Uh, Astaghfirullah, <laughs> maybe it's... When I was younger, I watched a movie called Bambi. Yeah, I'm sure all of you guys know what it is. You can laugh as much as you want. I know everybody in this room knows what Bambi is. Okay? There's a scene in, in that movie that ev most people, they remember it because it's really, it's very emotional, it's vivid, where there's a fire and the animals are running away from the fire, you know, and uh, eventually, I think it was, I think Bambi, she's a, like the baby deer, the foal, 
she, she turns to her mom and she says, what, what, what's going on, mom? Like, what's going on? Because she's afraid. And she's like, man has come into the forest. Right? That's why everybody's running. Man has come into the forest and started a fire. The natural reaction of an animal when it sees fire is to run in the opposite direction. What do humans do? Hey, let's go check out that blazing fire. Right? I'm, and the highway, if something accident happens, what do, we, what, is, what do people do? They slow down to look. Yeah, cause more accidents, right? That's the nature of human beings. Well, animal does what? Run away from the fire. What does the guy do? Yo, let's go check out that fire. That, I'm, am, I, am, I, am I lying, brothers? I, I'm not making that up, right? I, I mean, I've done it before too in my, in my time. See a blazing fire, it's like, yo, check that out. Come, come, you call your friends. Yo, come on, let's check it out. Let's go. Let's get in the van and a van full of guys go check out the... Fire, blazing fire, where everybody else is running away from it. This nature that man has for doing things that they know is not in his best interest. This is why the, the, uh, the Allah SWT says in, says in the Quran, in hum kal an'am, in hum kal an'am, bal hum adal. This is why Allah SWT says that in the Quran, He says, indeed, they're like animals, like cattle, an'am. Then He says, bal hum adal. Rather, they're more. More astray about the about the about the non-Muslims, and it be, this is uh, something that can be applied to even somebody who who who's born into a Muslim family, somebody who doesn't take heed to to the to to the reminder of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that there is the fire. You know it's you know it's true, you know it's real. The Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he saw it with his eyes. He's seen it. And it's mentioned in the book that you claim to have iman in. And fear the fire, that its fuel is men and stones. A stone cried. That's amazing. In the time of the Messenger of Allah. I wish I could cry right now. But maybe my heart is like stone. And may Allah give us hearts that are that are that are that are that are, that are salim, that are pure. I mean, it cried, it shrieked. And when it was asked, "What's happening?" she said, "It said, hijara The fuel of hellfire is men and stones. I'm a stone. From the fear of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, from the fear of the nar." What's wrong with us? Are we in doubt? In whom kal anam? No, rather they're like cattle. Bal hum adal. Because if believe you me, if I set a fire off in front of a bunch of cows and oxen, sheep, they're not gonna gather around and be like and call their friends to come look at what's going on. They're gonna bounce. They're gonna run. They're not gonna look back even. عرفتم أن النار حق ولا إيش ولم تهربوا منه. And then he mentioned وعلمتم أن الموت حق ولم تستعدوا لها ولا ولم تستعدوا له. That you know that the nar is true and you've not prepared anything for it. What's the point for you for this knowledge that you have? If you know it, the, it's, no, it's, the mawt is something, the Messenger of Allah said it the best. He said, Kafa bil mawti wa He said, Enough is, a, is death as a reminder, as an ibarah, as a lesson. You know, we know that if this one thing that whether you're Christian, Muslim, Buddhist, Jew, Hindu, Sikh, Taoist, Atheist, Agnostic, doesn't matter what you are. This is a human reality that nobody can die. That's something that we all agree upon as a human race. That death is something that you can't escape it. Right? You can't. So you know that mawt is something real, right? Like, the, like Allah SWT says, كُلُّ نَفْسٍ ذَائِقَةُ الْمَوْتِ Every soul, every living thing, 
every created living thing will taste death. From the Fir'aun up to Jibreel alayhi salam, every single living thing except al hay except the ever living al qayyum the everlasting subhanahu wa ta'ala wa jalla jalalu kullu man alayha fan everything in this dunya is fan it's perishing wa yabqa wajh rabbika dhul jalal wal ikram and it remains only the everlasting face Dhul Jalali wal Ikram, full of might and honor, the face of Allah. That's it. Everything else will be destroyed. There will be a point where, be, where nothing will be. Right? Everything will be done. Death will be dead. There's different narrations whether it will be angel of death to die in the last thing or Jibreel. The, 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 the one that I use usually is Jibreel. But imagine, there's nothing left. Just Jibreel and Allah. The messenger of Allah to the messengers of Allah and to the prophets of Allah. It's Jibreel alayhi salam. And he says to Jibreel, Ya Jibreel man baqiya min khalqi. He's like, oh Jibreel, what is left from my creation? And Jibreel says, Wajuka ad-daim al-baqi wa abduka da'if al-mayyit al-fani. Amazing, right? That Allah says, what's left for my creation, O Jibreel? And Jibreel says, you're weak, perishing slave, Jibreel. And you're everlasting, never perishing face, Ya Allah. Ya Allah. And then he says to Jibreel, la, Ya Jibreel, la Buddha min mawtik. Look at the khitab here. Look at the love. The, 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 the sentence is so much full of love. I think so. That's an old relationship. Jibreel, it's the commanders of the angels. He's the greatest of the angels. He's al ruh al amin. What, what wahi has come to us as mankind except to, to Jibreel alayhi salam? The, the general of the, the, the anbiya, of the general of the, the malaika, he's the general of the angels. Now he's standing before Allah and everything else is dead. And he says to Jibreel, Ya Jibreel, la Buddha min mawtik. Oh Jibreel, it has to be that you die. Why? Kullu nafs in da'iqatul maut. Every nafs has to taste death. And he falls down on his face and he begins to strike the ground with his wings. He says, Tabarakta wa ta'alayta ya dhal jalali wal ikram. Crying, he knowing that he can never fulfill the right of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he deserves to be, as he deserves to be worshipped, he can never worship Allah and give, fulfill his rights properly. Because it's Allah. This is the state of Jibreel when he dies. <laughs> Do you know that death is coming? You know it's coming. You know it's real, but you haven't prepared anything for it. وَعَرَفْتُمْ نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ وَلَمْ تُؤَدُّوا شُكْرَهَا That's something big. This is the eighth thing he mentioned. He's like, and you know, you have full awareness of the ni'mah of Allah, of the blessings of Allah in your life, and you haven't given its due thank, thank, uh, thanking, uh, thank, uh, you haven't given thankful uh, gratitude, you haven't given gratitude for it. You haven't given thanks for it. How much, what's the... وَإِن تَعَدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ وَإِن تَعَدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ You can never, you can never on your hands and count like, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, billion, billion, one trillion. You go on. And just to like, not even, I don't have to even explain it that much. Just the word shukr and hamd and you'll get the idea. Shukr, in the Arabic language, shakara yashkuru, it has to do with somebody, if I say, Ya Aba Yusuf, uh, or you, since you're older than me, you say, Ya Ziyad, here's 10 bucks. I say, Shukran. Shukran, Ya Ammi. Thank you so much. 
That's shukr. You gave me something, so I made shukr for it. Right? Hamd is not that. Hamd. Look, I don't say hamduk. A'udhu billah. Because hamd has to do with giving shukr to Allah, giving thana and praising Allah because He's Allah. Because it's Allah. Yeah? It's, clu- it's completely exclusive to Allah. So, it's, so you thank Allah for being able to thank Allah. Because not everybody thanks Allah. Right? Not everybody thanks Allah. So you thank Allah for thanking Allah. Think it's an infinite regression. It can never end. You thank Allah for thanking Allah. So you thank Allah for thanking to thank Allah. And then it goes on forever. So that's just one thing I'm telling you. Just from the Arabic language perspective. There's a bazillion things like that. You can't. You can't. Right? So you know. Right? You know the blessings of Allah in your life. But you don't. You haven't given its due thank. You haven't given its gratitude to Allah for it. And Allah said, and subhanAllah, look at the incentive that Allah gives us in the Quran. He says, وَلَئِنْ شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ If you were to give thanks for what I've given to you, I'll give you more. And human beings are weird. We're very weird. Now, straight up, we're ajeeb. There's no... We don't make sense sometimes, we really don't. What's wrong with us? I think about it. Maybe it's because we're insan. Insan from the word nasiya. Right? Insan means something that is a creature that forgets a lot. That's what insan means. Maybe that's why. But we constantly forget and we see the ni'mah of Allah. All this, all this, all this, this water, this masjid over our head that we have somewhere to pray in Darul Kufr. Right? That we can walk down the street without getting sniped off. All of these things that we, we don't, we have, we're in a state of ghafla. That the hisab of the mankind is coming closer every day, it draws closer. And they're in a state of ghafla, unawareness. You couldn't care less. Turning away from, from it. Allah musta'an. Allah musta'an wa alayhi tukna. Number nine. He says, In shagaltum bi'uha, in shagaltum bi'uyub in nasi, wa nasitum ayubakum. Right? So they asked him, Why aren't our duas making, getting accepted? He's wrenching all these things. Then number nine. He said, You got busy with the problems and the ayub and the, and, the, and, the, and the shortcomings of other people, and you forgot your own shortcomings. He's like this, Yehud, Yehud, and Yehud, and you're a Fir'aun in your house. You're, if you're a husband, you're a Fir'aun in your house. If you're a, 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 a son, you're living with your parents, you're a Fir'aun in your house. Right? You're a Fir'aun, your wife is Asiya. And your children are you know, Bani, Bani Israel. Yehud! You are, a, you are being an oppressive person in your own house. You're, you're busy with the Yehud and talking about the Yehud and the Kuffar. And a, what happened to the microscope? The message, the, uh, Umar ibn Khattab said, Hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu. He said, take yourselves to account before you are taken to account by Allah. He didn't say, worry about what other people are doing or what your Muslim brothers and sisters are doing. Yeah, that's what, but you have that, that, aspect of criticism that Allah has given to human beings that we're critical thinkers and we critique, we look at the world in a critical way. It's meant to be turned inwards. That you look at yourself and you critique yourself. But what? You've been become, you've busied yourself with the shortcomings of other people. Nasi, not just Muslim means, nas, of people. And you've forgotten the shortcomings of your own self. Of your own selves. Right? I mean, Allah says in the Quran, 
وأنتم تتلون تتلون الكتاب أفلا تعقلون It's like you order people with, with righteousness. He's saying, do you order people with righteousness and then forget yourself? This is a question Allah asks in the Quran. You ought to ask, we ought to ask ourselves. أَتَأْمُرُونَ النَّاسَ بِالْبِرِّ وَتَنْسَوْنَ أَنفُسَكُمْ Do you guys order other people with bir and piety and you forget yourselves? أَفَلَا تَعْقِلُونَ Do you have any sense, any understanding? Do you not use your intellect? This was something that the, 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 was addressed to the to the uh, to the Yahud. You know, the, the Yahud used to read their books, but they wouldn't, right? They wouldn't do anything about it. They would they would tell everybody else, oh, it's like this, but then forget that they're the ones. The Quran, since we have iman in it, it's first applicable to us. Should we need Sharia Allah? I swear, I tell you something. And you, it's, it's masajjal, right? I, the Muslims are not ready for Sharia Allah. We are so not ready. I'm not ready. That's my own personal thing. And that I know that I can say that with jazm about myself. If the Sharia came about tomorrow, I'd be in trouble. That's just me. When I look at the hal of the Muslims, my two cents are that we're not ready for the Sharia. We need the Sharia. We need the Sharia. I said, wa anfusakum. You ordering people with goodness. You want the Sharia, but you forgot the Sharia in your own life. That's where the Sharia starts. It starts with you. That's where it starts. You have to start with yourself, and then work your way out. You start with yourself, but then you start with your wife or your mother and your sisters, and you you start with your family, and then it you know the ripple effect when you when a human being fixes himself, it creates a ripple. It creates a ripple, you know, and it waves and it permeates outwards. But if you try to start outwards and, and work your way in, it's not going to happen. You forgot about the, your own shortcomings and you've busied yourself with the uh, shortcomings of other people. Right? And then the last thing he mentioned. Rahimullah Ibrahim ibn Adham he mentioned it was that وَدَفَنْتُمْ مَوْتَاكُمْ وَلَمْ تَعْتَبِرُوهُ That you've buried your dead and you've gained no lessons you haven't taken any lessons from it and if somebody goes for Umrah or even here Wallahi al-Azim especially for the young people I swear by Allah you should really try your best to, if you follow a janazah, try to take part in, you know, going to the qabr and putting the body into the grave. It's a life-altering experience. Washing the body as well. You know, I can only tell you my personal experiences. I had a friend Saeed Habishi rahimullah ta'ala, may Allah have mercy on him. One of my dear, dear friends. Two years ago he died. Car accident. Saudi. Uh, his car flipped. Uh, him, his, his, his whole family was in the car. Him, his wife, he had three kids. Two daughters and his, younger, and his youngest was a son. Uh, the car flipped. He was thrown out of the vehicle. Like he, like because of the force of the vehicle, he got thrown out. His three children got thrown out. Uh, Saeed rahimullah, died on the spot. Two of his children died on the spot. And then his middle, his middle daughter, Maryam, rahimahullah, she, she was brain dead for about a day and a half and then she also died. The only one who survived was his wife. And she was pinned under the car for like a few hours. And just to break, break from the story, when they took her, his wife Hafidahullah and may Allah sabbarahullah, may Allah give her patience. When they took her to the hospital, it was Dhuhr time. She heard the adhan. What did she do? She told everybody to stop and she told them, bring me water. She doesn't know if her husband is dead or alive. She doesn't know if her five-year-old daughter is dead or alive. She doesn't know if her four-year-old daughter is dead or alive. She doesn't know if her one-and-a-half-year-old son is dead or alive. 
she doesn't know. But she heard, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. And she said, bring me water. Subhanallah. They said, La, you can't make wudu. You're bleeding. You were under a car. She said, bring me turab, bring me dust, bring me dirt. And she made tayyimum. And she prayed duhr. On its time. I'm ashamed of myself. So Saeed died, his two children died, and when that one middle daughter, she stayed alive for a day and a half, and then she later on passed away uh, in, the, in the hospital. So we went, you know, alhamdulillah, he, a week before he died, I was sitting with him in the haram. And every time he saw me, it was like his ada used to say, and he had an accent, he said, well, my brother, you know, I, want, I, I don't want to go back to Canada. I want to die in Medina. I want to die. I don't want to go back. I want to die in Medina. I want Baqi. I want the Sahaba of the Messenger of Allah. He had that love. And Allah, Allah heard his call. Say, Alhamdulillah. So we went and you know, we had to do the paperwork. We had to wash his body. Now, a friend of mine, and, uh, me and a friend of mine, we had to go get uh, his middle daughter released from a hospital because she died in a hospital different from her, from, she was in another hospital uh, than her mother, right? She, um, her mother was in one hospital and her daughter was in another hospital. So by the time we got back to uh, the Prophet's mosque where they prepare the bodies for the burial, they had already washed Saeed. Uh, and and they'd, they, the daughters, they were washed by the women. Now, Abdul Wahab was his name. Rahimahullah. He was my son's age. Uh, he's about a few months older or younger than my son. They're about the same age. And Sa'id Rahimahullah used to say to me, because I, I was away from my family in Medina while my family was here, he used to, be, he used to come around the jami, around the university with his children, and he used to be like, Ziyad, come here, play with my son. It, you know, busy yourself with my son until you go back to your son. No? And Abdul Wahab, he looked like my son. So I told him, I told the guys who were washing the body, he's like, I want to wash Abdul Wahab. Because I didn't get a chance to wash my friend. Right? I was too late. So they said, okay, there's, they have rules, like no, no more than three people in there, because everybody wants to go in. And um, so we're washing this small guy, he's about this big. You know, and he was so active, all the time active. Yeah, this breaking this, take this, splash this, rip my pocket, take my run away with my phone. So seeing him just jammed, not moving, my heart started to pound. You know, I was like, Subhanallah, Ya Abdul Wahab. And I and I couldn't help but think about my son when I saw him, the same curly hair, the same beautiful eyelashes, same chubby cheeks. You know, we washed his body, put him in the room with her, his father and his daughters. And before we took out the body to, to the haram to be prayed over, you know, me and some of the close friends of Saeed, we went into the room one last time, we removed the veil from his face and we kissed him. And then that's the last I saw of Saeed. And the, the police, in the haram, when we were taking the bodies to Baqi on our backs, there were so many people, so many people, students of knowledge, all of them were in the, the haram was packed. Ulama, all of them, were, so many ulama were in that masjid for that time, because they know Sa'i, they knew him. He was a strong student of knowledge. You know, and the stu cops were like, who is this guy? They stopped my friend and like, yeah, who died? Yeah, king or prince, what is this? He's like, we haven't, many years, but it's been a really long time. We had not seen such a huge crowd of people. Rahimahullah, amazing. So many people prayed over him and then followed his janazah. And believe me, Akhi, we buried him 
people kept coming, people who hated him. People who had animosity towards the brother were there. People who loved their brother were there. It was amazing. People stayed around his, around his grave after burying him for like 40 minutes, just making dua. Point is, is that when I came and I saw my son for the first time, I didn't even look at my wife. I ran straight to my son, I picked him up, and I held him almost like I could squish him into myself. I held him, you know, I was just, I, I didn't want to let go, I cried. I haven't seen my son in eight months. But that feeling that I had when I saw Abdul Wahab like that, it just made me like, I couldn't get my mind off my son. And then like, just because he's three years old, that doesn't mean he's going to live, I'll watch him grow old. We don't know. Now this sister, one day ago, was a student of knowledge, a mother, right? All of these things. And in a lahda, it's all gone. And she didn't, and, the, and may Allah reward this woman. I, I, I don't know a sister like this, this sister. When they picked her up from the hospital, she said, where is Saeed? She still doesn't know, this is three days later. She doesn't, she doesn't know if her husband or her children are dead. And one of my teachers was, went to pick her up with, uh, with, with her neighbor, Saeed's neighbor, and his wife. And he very quietly said, you know, you know, look at all the uh, Saeed's dead. And your children didn't make it. She didn't go, oh, oh my God. She said, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. He said, indeed, to Allah we belong, and indeed, Allah we will return. And may Allah give me, replace what I lost for something better. And she cried lightly, quietly, she didn't raise her voice. You've buried your dead, but you haven't gained any lessons from it. One minute. These are the, I'm done. These are the ten things he mentioned, go over them again. He said that you... The people said, why are our du'as accepted? He said, you know Allah, but you haven't given his right to him. You've read the Qur'an, but you have not apl applied that Qur'an in your life. You've claimed to love the Messenger of Allah, and you've gone against his sunnah. You knew that the shaitan was your enemy, but you made him your friend anyways. Right? You knew that Jannah was real and that you did nothing to, nothing to attain it. You knew that the Jahannam was real but you did nothing to, you didn't run away from it. You didn't run away from it, right? And you knew that death was real but you prepared nothing for it. And you knew that, and you knew the blessings, you know the blessings of Allah in your life but you never gave thanks for it, right? And you became busy with the problems and the, and the shortcomings of other people, but you never looked at yourself, right? And the last thing, that you buried your dead and you never took any ibrah, you never took any lessons from it. You gained nothing in burying your dead. I'll end with the ayah where Allah SWT says, يَوْمٌ لَا يَنْفَعُ مَالٌ وَلَا بَنُونَ إِلَّا مَنْ أَطَى اللَّهَ بِقَلْبٍ سَلِيمٌ their day will come where not children or wealth will benefit you. Except the one who comes to Allah with a salim, a pure and clean heart. I ask Allah to give us all pure and, 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 and clean hearts. Wa salli Allahumma wa sallim wa barak ala abdihi wa rasulihi nabiyina wa habibina sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbati ajma'een. Subhanaka Allahumma wa bihamdaik shidu wa la ilaha ilan ta astaghfiru ka atubu ilayhi. Drink your water. Oh. <laughs>